So um, yeah, so, so I'm doing Tensegrity robots for space exploration. I'll get into a moment of what that actually means. So this is for NASA, and, and NASA is very mission oriented, and this whole project started as a NASA concept mission. So that's the first thing I'll go into. So, so our primary mission to, to just start this project out was actually how could you investigate Saturn's moon Titan um, at low cost? So, so this is kind of a video of what the mission would look like. So some probe would bring you to Titan. You would have some aero shell that would um, eject it. So, so up until now, it's just kind of a normal space mission. But then, poof, this very compact thing would pop out of the aero shell. Um, Titan has lots of atmosphere, and it wouldn't necessarily deploy any parachutes or airbags or anything. It would just kind of bounce on the surface, because these things are actually pretty bouncy. So it would bounce a while, it would rest to a stop. Um, the, the actual structure would protect the payload. But then you're just not a landing system. The thing actually has motors in it, has actuators. The entire landing structure itself can now move. And it can not only move, it can move in interesting ways. It, now it's not a thing with little tiny wheels that get stuck. It's a giant ball that can move over lots of different things. It can move over different trains. Uh, um, we aren't to the stage yet, but, but someday maybe it can move actually quite fast and efficiently, uh, unlike current NASA missions. And the best thing, if you basically landed from outer space, you can fall off some pretty steep walls and you don't really care. You've landed from outer space. So, 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 so we think that this is a really neat system that, that can be um, you know, a, a landing mobility and, um, and deployment system. Um, so what is a tensegrity? Well, they're kind of interesting. So essentially made of rods and cables. And in principle, your, your rods can be perfectly stiff and your cables can be perfectly elastic. So, so, so completely stiff, completely elastic. But if you form them the right way so the rods don't touch each other, you end up with something that's not stiff or elastic. You actually end up with a tension network that's somewhere in between. So it's kind of like a soft robot that's not really built on classic soft robot parts. They're very traditional cables and, and hard rods, but it becomes a soft robot. Um, traditionally, these have been used in artwork. Um, mainly because they're kind of interesting, modern artwork. Um, you can build very big structures that are somewhat lightweight uh, um, that look kind of neat. They don't look like they should actually work. And there's actually one on the DC mall, not far from NASA headquarters. I got to talk to the NASA guys. I said, you actually have one right here. Um, there probably exists a lot in biology. Now, biology is very complicated. So there's certain parts, though, that appear to act like these tensegrity structures. So our fascia that, that control our muscles and how things are put together. And even at the cells, the, the little strands inside eukaryotic cells act a lot like a tensegrity. Um, and the neat thing about tensegrity though for engineering is you have no lever arm. So that's the key. No rigid component connects to another rigid component. So, so traditional robot, it, you have big lever arms, lever arms, and you can actually amplify forces. So, so, so there's a famous case of this giant NASA robot that that's like weighs many tons, is nine foot tall, and actually got stuck on a rock about this side. And is because there is some, it, it doesn't usually get stuck on a rock this side, but, but it happened. It's because this big lever arm went through all these rigid components on that robot, and just that magnitude of force overpowered it. But it's integrity you actually de-amplify forces. If I push here, this has a force, this has slightly less force, and this has slightly less force. So no forces are amplified, they're always de-amplified. And an interesting thing relating to biological systems is um, you look at a traditional robot, has a very rigid torso. It's kind of a rigid model of robots. Uh, um, you might have some nice things connected to the torso, but that's not what people are like. People are much more mobile. And if you look at it, people don't have this rigid thing. People have very non-rigid cores. They're a lot like a tensegrity. So, so we, we think that that's a real key to mobility in true soft robots. And we're trying things like spines, too, instead of these balls. And um, we have some kind of nifty spine work where this is all distributed built and distributed control. It's kind of neat research. Extra tensegrity robot um, developed oh yeah, at UC Q9. Berkeley. 
since QNOM's here, I don't have to have him talk on video. Um, and, and you don't have to see it because that robot's right there. So, so, so as far as we know, this is the first fully actuated integrity ball where everything's actuated that wasn't connected to some power supply. And, and it, it was run on a very familiar monument there. Um, so back to the NASA mission. So essentially, again, it, this is a deployment landing exploration system all at once. And our goal was to test, is this really true? Can this be used for all three things? So we did a lot of modeling of unpacking. So, so there's lots of ways to pack these. Um, don't know how well this one packs. It packs pretty well. So, so you can pack it like that, but there's lots of modes of packing. Um, and it can land. So it can land at pretty high impact. And more importantly, you can see here, it can protect a payload in the middle. So we've looked at all these worst case scenarios, how you can land, what the G-forces are in the payload, and if you'd expect a payload to survive. And mobility. So we've done lots of tests, first in simulation. Um, it can go up hills, it can go across trains, it can go kind of you know, these rolling hills. Uh, um, in simulation, the, the mobility works quite well. The, the real hardware is more complicated, but it gives us lots of hopes that this will actually be not only a good mobility device, but actually a superior one. Um, so we've done some pretty tough drop tests. That This is from three stories, which is about the terminal velocity we'd expect in Titan. Um, this particular one, the, the, this was at University of Idaho, actually had some motors in it to actuate, and it still worked after its drop test. Um, this was a very early design that, that we actually, um, this comes from a student at Belgium that only had six motors. It couldn't do that much, but, but it could survive being dropped. Um, it, it had some interesting rolling patterns. Um, this is, so this is one of the first prototypes. It looks kind of creepy, but you would kind of expect biologically inspired stuff that doesn't actually exist in nature to look kind of creepy. Um, so again, we're very happy with this, but it was under-actuated, unlike this robot, meaning it, it rolled downhill okay. <laughs> but, but, but if you weren't downhill, it was a bit problematic. Um, so again, we've done lots of drop tests. So this was an instrumented drop test from University of Idaho. Um, they actually have a bunch of sensors in the middle and show secondary effects of dropping. Um, so the next video is interesting. This is University of Idaho. And this is where they, they wanted to construct a fairly large tensegrity ball to drop it. But the manufacturer gave them the wrong springs. They gave them springs that would not work. It would break due to their measurements. Um, but this is the end of the semester, so they dropped it anyway. And you'll see in the slide, sure enough, it did break. But you'll see in the next slide, that even though it broke because they had the wrong springs, you'll see it here, it's actually breaking here. Some of the cables break, a lot of the springs break, but still holding its shape. It didn't totally fall apart, it didn't collapse. So we have lots of hopes of robustness from that. Some things can break. It won't work quite as well, but it'll work a little bit. So after all these tests, and our prototype ball, we actually started building our more expensive ball. So, so, so we did our, our tensioning test. So, so it's interesting. It, it kind of, you can, it almost looks like maybe a person tensioning, but, but there, there's a lot of actual strong tensioning difference in there between the least tension, the most tension, and it's just kind of slightly changing. Um, and we did some drop and rolling tests. The real test is, so we finally, we have a Mars yard at Ames that was actually built by Google because they paved over our old Mars yard. So, so they built us a nicer one. Um, so we, we had it roll. So, so it actually rolls um, fairly decent on the Mars yard. You know, this isn't nice, smooth floors. These are basically gravel but that, that's even sometimes not that easy to walk on. Um, it did just fine. We, we didn't have to you know, do lots of prior runs to, to make sure it worked. We just basically threw it out there and it worked. Um, so, so what do we do when we've spent a few years building a robot and, and very expensive components and finally get it to do something? Well, we, we drop it off our high bay lot. <laughs> so <laughs> this is the first day, so bang, it drops. Um, I don't know if we have audio, I guess maybe not from this. Uh, um, and it works, so, so, so it's still contention. Uh, um, 
turns out it, we drop it a few times. One cable did break, but um, yeah, there's a glory shot of it dropping. It, it, it goes with the thud, but still makes it. So we're very proud of our first robot, uh, and, and that grant's about over, but we have future directions. So NASA Early Stage Innovations has funded this project. So it's essentially a similar thing, but instead of um, being only actuated by motors, it'd actually be actuated in, in the center, but by a gas thruster. So, so there's been lots of hopping robot concepts before, lots of gas thruster robots before, but the real issue, if you're hopping or you're flying at big differences, how do you land? It's really never addressed how do you land and how do you protect a payload when you land. But this thing's made to land, it can land over and over again. So that's essentially the concept. We have a gas thruster that's not that difficult. Um, and maybe we can do large bounces. Um, maybe we can do many small bounces. You know, maybe something in between. But the point is, it's good at landing. We can land in many different ways. And when we land, we just aren't stuck there. But we can actually start rolling where we want to go. And we can even land like close to a canyon and fall off a cliff. It's not a big deal. I mean, even our expensive robot, we throw off cliffs and it does fine. And then we can land where we want to go. Um, this concept is for the moon. We could even perhaps go to some of the caves on the moon. We can go to some things that are underneath that are difficult to get to. So there's lots of mobility. Um, besides the moon, um, we just like throwing this thing. It's really fun to throw. So, so, so why not throw it off from a UAV? So typical stall speed of a UAV is similar to the terminal velocity in Titan. It, it's very convenient. So in principle, you could pack this to a UAV, send it very far away, you know, fixed wing UAV, and just drop it. And then it could actually roll to where it needs to go. So this would be a very fast deployment system that, that's actually quite capable. Um, one step further is maybe just the entire UAV is a tensegrity. Um, it, this has two advantages. I mean, one is here that, that you know maybe it could land. You know, UAVs aren't always reliable, or maybe you just don't have landing runways for it. And, and fixed. This is for fixed wing. I mean, quad rotors, of course, can land a lot more places, but fixed wings can have amazing range. They can go thousands of miles. They can be very efficient. They can be very large. It's really hard to do this on a rotorcraft. Um, so there's lots of landing options, um, which is good for perhaps other planets, but more importantly from Earth, if one of these things hits something, it's likely not to break it. So that's very important. You don't want them breaking people. You don't want them breaking our expensive things, especially if you have urban robots. So we're looking into that. Um, duck climbing. It, it turns out that um, the Office of Naval Research was actually interested in this, that, that ships have lots of little piping all over the place that they can't really monitor. Um, traditional snake robots or traditional robots just aren't good at that. So we actually built a duck climbing robot. Um, the other neat thing about a duck climbing robot, though, it can go around corners, but it's actually very related to a person's elbow or any animal elbow. So, so normal you know, three degree of freedom, six degree of freedom mechanical thing isn't actually as many degrees of freedom we have because we aren't attached really to a rigid elbow even though a skeleton you'd see in a science class has that rigid pin. That's not true. Well, our, our elbows and our bodies are actually built like that where they actually move laterally along with their hinge. So, so we're doing that. And that basically summarizes our research, but um, I'd like to thank our integrity team. So, so the associate administrator of NASA came, and, and this was the team at that time, a lot of Berkeley students, a lot of um, UC Santa Cruz students, and, and some other people with all our integrities in one place. So, so that was a lot of fun.